the Slata was a legally privileged noble class with origins in the Kingdom of Poland. It gained considerable institutional privileges between 1333 and 1370 during the reign of King Casimir III the Great. In 1413, following a series of tentative personal unions between the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Crown Kingdom of Poland, the existing Lithuanian nobility formally joined this class. As the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth evolved and expanded in territory, its membership grew to include the leaders of Ducal Prussia, Podolian and Ruthenian lands. The origins of the Slata are shrouded in obscurity and mystery and have been the subject of a variety of theories. Traditionally, its members were owners of landed property, often in the form of manor farms, or so-called flawalks. The nobility negotiated substantial and increasing political and legal privileges for itself throughout its entire history until the decline of the Polish Commonwealth in the late 18th century. During the partitions of Poland from 1772 to 1795, its members began to lose these legal privileges and social status. From that point until 1918, the legal status of the nobility was essentially dependent upon the policies of the three partitioning powers, the Russian Empire, the Kingdom of Prussia, and the Habsburg Monarchy. The legal privileges of the Slata were legally abolished in the Second Polish Republic by the March Constitution of 1921. The notion that all Polish nobles were social equals, regardless of their financial status or offices held, is enshrined in a traditional Polish saying. Slichik na zagrodzi, ra kubt na wodzi. A euro, which may roughly be rendered. The noble on the croft, is the voivode's equal or the tenant farmer noble stands equal to the noble army commander. History equals Etymology equals The term slata is derived from the old High German word slata, which means, noble, family, much as many other Polish words pertaining to the nobility derive from German words a euro for example, the Polish research, and the Polish herb. Poles of the 17th century assumed that slata came from the German schlichten. Also suggestive is the German Schlicht. Early Polish historians thought the term may have derived from the name of the legendary Proto-Polish chief, Lech, mentioned in Polish and Czech writings. Some powerful Polish nobles were referred to as magnates, and Mo won Courtney. See Magnates of Poland and Lithuania. The Polish term Slata designated the formalized, hereditary noble class of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In official Latin documents of the Old Commonwealth, hereditary slata are referred to as nobilitas, and are indeed the equivalent in legal status of the English nobility. Today the word slata in the Polish language simply translates to nobility. In its broadest meaning, it can also denote some non-hereditary honorary knighthoods granted today by some European monarchs. Occasionally, 19th century non noble landowners were referred to as slata by courtesy or error, when they owned manorial estates though they were not noble by birth. In the narrow sense, slata denotes the old Commonwealth nobility. In the past, a certain misconception sometimes led to the mistranslation of slata as gentry rather than nobility. This mistaken practice began due to the economic status of some slata members being inferior to that of the nobility in other European countries. The slata included those almost rich and powerful enough to be magnates down to rascals with a noble lineage, no land, no castle, no money, no village, and no peasants. As some slata were poorer than some non-noble gentry, some particularly impoverished slata were forced to become tenants of the wealthier gentry. In doing so, however, these slata retained all their constitutional prerogatives, as it was not wealth or lifestyle, but hereditary juridical status, that determined nobility. An individual nobleman was called a slichik, and a noblewoman a slichianka. Equals origins equals. Polish. The origins of the slata, while ancient, have always been considered obscure. As a result, its members often referred to it as odd witcher. Two popular historic theories of origin forwarded by its members and earlier historians and chroniclers involved descent from the ancient Iranian tribes known as Sarmitians or from Japheth, one of Noah's sons. Other fanciful theories included its foundation by Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great or regional leaders who had not mixed their bloodlines with those of slaves, prisoners, 
and aliens. Another theory describes its derivation from a non-Slavic warrior class, forming a distinct element known as the Lichisiliki within the ancient Polonic tribal groupings. This hypothesis states this upper class was not of Slavonic extraction and was of a different origin than the Slavonic peasants over which they ruled. The Slata were differentiated from the rural population. The nobleman's sense of distinction led to practices that in later periods would be characterized as racism. The Slata were noble in the Aryan sense, noble in contrast to the people over whom they ruled after coming into contact with them. The Slata traced their descent from Lech Lech, who probably founded the Polish kingdom in about the 5th century. Lechia was the name of Poland in antiquity, and the Slata's own name for themselves was Lechisi Leki. An exact counterpart of Slata society was the Mirasi system of tenure of southern India Euro an aristocracy of Equalichia Euro settled as conquerors among a separate race. The Polish state paralleled the Roman Empire in that full rights of citizenship were limited to the Slata. The Slata were a caste, a military caste, as in Hindu society. In the year 1244, Bolasai, Duke of Masavia, identified members of the Knights clan as members of a genealogia. I received my good servitors, Racibots and Albert from the land of, Great Poland, and from the clan, genealogia called Gelito, with my well-disposed knowledge, that is, consent and encouragement and the cry, Vositashio, that is, the Gadeo, by the name of Nagadi, and I established them in the said land of mine, Masavia, on the military tenure described elsewhere in the charter. The documentation regarding Racibots and Albert's tenure as the earliest surviving of the use of the clan name and cry defining the honorable status of Polish knights. The names of knightly genealogy only came to be associated with heraldic devices later in the Middle Ages and in the early modern period. The Polish clan name and cry ritualized the Us Militaire, that is, the power to command an army and they had been used some time before 1244 to define knightly status. In Poland, the Radwinis were noted relatively early as the descendants of Radwin, a knight, more properly a research from the German Ritter active a few decades earlier. Around the 14th century, there was little difference between knights and the Slata in Poland. Members of the Slata had the personal obligation to defend the country, thereby becoming the kingdom's most privileged social class. Inclusion in the class was almost exclusively based on inheritance. Concerning the early Polish tribes, geography contributed to long-standing traditions. The Polish tribes were internalized and organized around a unifying religious cult, governed by the weak, an assembly of free tribesmen. Later, when safety required power to be consolidated, an elected prince was chosen to govern. The election privilege was usually limited to elites. The tribes were ruled by clans consisting of people related by blood or marriage and theoretically descending from a common ancestor, giving the Rakub D clan a highly developed sense of solidarity. The Starosta had judicial and military power over the Rakub D clan, although this power was often exercised with an assembly of elders. Strongholds called Gryod were built where the religious cult was powerful, where trials were conducted, and where clans gathered in the face of danger. The Apol was the territory occupied by a single tribe. Mieszkowie of Poland established an elite knightly retinue from within his army, which he depended upon for success in uniting the Lechitic tribes and preserving the unity of his state. Documented proof exists of Mieszkowie's successors utilizing such a retinue, as well. Another class of knights were granted land by the prince, allowing them the economic ability to serve the prince militarily. A Polish nobleman living at the time prior to the 15th century was referred to as a research, very roughly equivalent to the English knight, the critical difference being the status of research was almost strictly hereditary. The class of all such individuals was known as the Rysistwo. Representing the wealthier families of Poland and itinerant knights from abroad seeking their fortunes, this other class of Rysistwo, which became the Slata nobility, gradually formed apart from Miesko eyes and his successors' elite retinues. This Rysistro nobility obtained more privileges granting them favored status. They were absolved from particular burdens and obligations under ducal law, resulting in the belief only Rysistro could serve as officials in state administration. 
select Risistwo were distinguished above the other Risistwo, because they descended from past tribal dynasties, or because early Piasts endowments made them select beneficiaries. These Risistwo of great wealth were called Moan Kortani. Socially they were not a distinct class from the Risistwo from which they all originated and to which they would return were their wealth lost. The period of division from AD 1138 to Euro AD 1314, which included nearly 200 years of feudal fragmentation and which stemmed from Bolas III's division of Poland among his sons, was the genesis of the social structure which saw the economic elevation of the great land-owning feudal nobles from the Risistwo they originated from. The prior social structure was one of Polish tribes united into the historic Polish nation under a state ruled by the Pius dynasty, this dynasty appearing circa 850 AD. Some Mohan Kortani descending from past tribal dynasties regarded themselves as co-proprietors of Piast realms, even though the Piasts attempted to deprive them of their independence. These Mohan Kortani constantly sought to undermine princely authority. In Gaul Anonym's Chronicle, there is noted the nobility's alarm when the Palatine Cisich elevated those of a lower class over those who were noble-born and trusting them with state offices. Lithuanian In Lithuania Propria and in Samogitia prior to the creation of the Kingdom of Lithuania by Mindaugas, nobles were named die Bestlutin in sources that were written in German language. How they were named in the Lithuanian language is unknown a year or no sources exists. The higher nobility were named Kunigai or Kunigaka infinite i a euro that is, loan word from Scandinavic Ning. They were the established local leaders and warlords. During the development of the state they gradually became subordinated to higher dukes, and later to the king of Lithuania. Because of expansion of Lithuanian duchy into lands of Ruthenia in the mid of 14th century a new term appeared to denominate nobility Bajare a euro from Ruthenian th plus or minus th three quarters nn euro th micron. This word to this day is used in Lithuanian language to name nobility, not only for own, but also for nobility of other countries. After the union of Horodio the Lithuanian nobility acquired equal status with the Polish Slata and over time began to become more and more Polonized, although they did preserve their national consciousness, and in most cases recognition of their Lithuanian family roots. In the 16th century some of the Lithuanian nobility claimed that they were of Roman extraction, and the Lithuanian language was just a morphed Latin language. This led to paradox, Polish nobility claimed own ancestry from Sarmatian tribes, but Sarmatians were considered enemies to Romans. Thus new Roman Sarmatian theory was created. Strong cultural ties with Polish nobility led that in the 16th century the new term to name Lithuanian nobility appeared angstrom la, ktaa euro a direct loan word from Polish slata. From the view of historical truth Lithuanians also should use this term, angstrom la, kta, to name own nobility, but Lithuanian linguists forbade the usage of this Polish loan word. This refusal to use word slata complicates all naming. The process of Polonization took place over a lengthy period of time. At first only the highest members of the nobility were involved, although gradually a wider group of the population was affected. The major effects on the lesser Lithuanian nobility took place after various sanctions were imposed by the Russian Empire such as removing Lithuania from the names of the Kubaniers few years after the November uprising. After the January uprising the sanctions went further, and Russian officials announced that Lithuanians are Russians seduced by Poles and Catholicism, and began to intensify Russification, and to ban the printing of books in the Lithuanian language. Ruthenian In Ruthenia the nobility gradually gravitated its loyalty towards the multicultural and multilingual Grand Duchy of Lithuania after the principalities of Halaj and Volhynia became a part of it. Many noble Ruthenian families intermarried with Lithuanian ones. The Orthodox nobles' rights were nominally equal to those enjoyed by Polish and Lithuanian nobility, but there was a cultural pressure to convert to Catholicism, that was greatly eased in 1596 by the Union of Brest. See for example careers of Senator Adam Kajil and Jerzy Franciszek Kultryki. Ennoblement. Equals in the Kingdom of Poland equals. The number of legally granted ennoblements after the 15th century was minimal. 
in the Kingdom of Poland and later in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, ennoblement may be equated with an individual given legal status as a slutter. Initially, this privilege could be granted by monarch, but from the 1641 onward, this right was reserved for the scheme. Most often the individual being ennobled would join an existing noble slaughter clan and assume the undifferentiated coat of arms of that clan. According to heraldic sources total number of legal ennoblements issued between the 14th century and the mid-18th century, is estimated at approximately 800. This is an average of only about two ennoblements per year or only 0.000014 a year or 0.000001 of historical population. Compare, historical demography of Poland. The close of the late 18th century was a period in which a definite increase in the number of ennoblements can be noted. This can most readily be explained in terms of the ongoing decline and eventual collapse of Commonwealth and the resulting need for soldiers and other military leaders. Total number of ennoblements estimation, according to heraldic sources 1,600 is a total estimated number of all legal ennoblements throughout the history of Kingdom of Poland and Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth from the 14th century onward. Types of ennoblement, Adipur Herbau or Euro the old way of ennoblement, popular in the 15th century, connected with adoption into an existing noble clan by a powerful lord, but abolished in the 17th century. Scar table latter euro introduced by Pacta Conventor of the 17th century, this was ennoblement into a sort of conditional, or graduated nobility status. Scar tabels could not hold public offices or be members of the Sheem, but after three generations, the descendants of these families would mature to full slaughter status. Similar terms, indigenate euro recognition of foreign noble status. A foreign noble, after indigenate, received all privileges of a Polish Slechik. In Polish history, 413 foreign noble families were recognized. Prior to the 17th century this was done by the king and Sheem, after the 17th century it was done only by the Sheem. Secret ennoblement a euro this was of questionable legal status and was often not recognized by many slata. It was typically granted by the elected monarch without the required legal approval of the Sheem equals in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania equals, in the late 14th century, in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, Vytautas the Great reformed the Grand Duchy's army, instead of calling all men to arms, he created forces comprising professional warriors a Euro Bajari. As there were not enough nobles, Vytautas trained suitable men, relieving them of labor on the land and of other duties. For their military service to the Grand Duke, they were granted land that was worked by hired men. The newly formed noble families generally took up, as their family names, the Lithuanian pagan given names of their ennobled ancestors. This was the case with the Goa Tortai, Radvilos, Astikai, Khan registered trademarks Galos and others. These families were granted their coats of arms under the Union of Herodlo. In 1506, King Sigismund I the Old confirmed the position of the Lithuanian Council of Lords in state politics and limited entry into the nobility. Privileges Specific rights of the slaughter included, the right to hold outright ownership of land, not as a fief, conditional upon service to the liege lord, but absolutely in perpetuity unless sold. The right to join in political and military assemblies of the regional nobility the right to form independent administrative councils for their locality, the right to cast a vote for Polish kings, the right to travel freely anywhere in the old commonwealth of the Polish and Lithuanian nobility, or outside it, as foreign policy dictated, the right to demand information from crown offices, the right to spiritual semi-independence from the clergy, the right to interdict, in suitable ways the passage of foreigners and townsmen through their territories, the right of priority over the courts of the peasantry, special rights in Polish courts a euro including freedom from arbitrary arrest and freedom from corporal punishment, the right to sell their military or administrative services, heraldic rights, the right to receive higher pay when entitled in the lever copyright a young mass, educational rights, the right of importing duty-free goods often, the exclusive right to enter the clergy until the time of the three partitions of Poland. The right to try their peasants for major offences. 
significant legislative changes in the status of the slaughter, as defined by Robert de la and Ian Jeffries, consist of its 1374 exemption from the land tax, a 1425 guarantee against the arbitrary arrests and or seizure of property of its members, a 1454 requirement that military forces and new taxes be approved by provincial schemes and statutes issued between 1496 and 1611 that prescribed the rights of commoners. Nobles were born into a noble family, adopted by a noble family or ennobled by a king or shim for various reasons. Many nobles were, in actuality, really usurpers, being commoners, who moved into another part of the country and falsely pretended to noble status. Hundreds of such false nobles were denounced by Hieronym Nicandratreca in his Liber Generationis Plebeinorium in the first half of the 16th century. The law forbade non-nobles from owning nobility estates and promised the estate to the denouncer. Trepka was an impoverished nobleman who lived a townsman life and collected hundreds of such stories hoping to take over any of such estates. It does not seem he ever succeeded in proving one at the court. Many schemes issued decrees over the centuries in an attempt to resolve this issue, but with little success. It is unknown what percentage of the Polish nobility came from the lower orders of society, but most historians agree that nobles of such base origins formed a significant element of the slaughter. The Polish nobility enjoyed many rights that were not available to the noble classes of other countries and, typically, each new monarch conceded them further privileges. Those privileges became the basis of the Golden Liberty in the Polish Euro-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Despite having a king, Poland was called the Nobility's Commonwealth because the king was elected by all interested members of hereditary nobility and Poland was considered to be the property of this class, not of the king or the ruling dynasty. This state of affairs grew up in part because of the extinction of the male line descendants of the old royal dynasty and the selection by the nobility of the Polish king from among the dynasty's female line descendants. Poland's successive kings granted privileges to the nobility at the time of their election to the throne and at other times in exchange for ad hoc permission to raise an extraordinary tax or a pospolite bus in e. Poland's nobility thus accumulated a growing array of privileges and immunities, in 1355 in Buda King Casimir III the Great issued the first country-wide privilege for the nobility, in exchange for their agreement that in the lack of Casimir's male heirs, the throne would pass to his nephew, Louis I of Hungary. He decreed that the nobility would no longer be subject to extraordinary taxes, or use their own funds for military expeditions abroad. He also promised that during travels of the royal court, the king and the court would pay for all expenses instead of using facilities of local nobility. In 1374 King Louis of Hungary approved the privilege of Kosciuszko and Coice in order to guarantee the Polish throne for his daughter Jadwiga. He broadened the definition of who was a member of the nobility and exempted the entire class from all but one tax. In addition, the king's right to raise taxes was abolished. No new taxes could be raised without the agreement of the nobility. Henceforth, also, District offices were reserved exclusively for local nobility, as the privilege of Kosciuszko forbade the king to grant official posts and major Polish castles to foreign knights. Finally, this privilege obliged the king to pay indemnities to nobles injured or taken captive during a war outside Polish borders. In 1422 King Władysław II J.G.A. Angstromo by the privilege of Szera S.K. established the inviolability of nobles' property and ceded some jurisdiction over fiscal policy to the royal council, including the right to mint coinage. In 1430 with the privileges of Jidlnia, confirmed at Krakow Cube W in 1433, based partially on his earlier Brzeczkowski privilege, King Wardislaw II J.G.A. Angstromo granted the nobility a guarantee against arbitrary arrest, similar to the English Magna Cartus habeas corpus, known from its own Latin name as Nominem Captivabimus. Henceforth no member of the nobility could be imprisoned without a warrant from a court of justice, the king could neither punish nor imprison any noble at his whim. King Wardislaw's quid pro quo for this boon was the noble's guarantee that his throne would be inherited by one of his sons. On May 2, 1447 the same king issued the Wilno privilege which gave the Lithuanian boyars the same rights as those possessed by the Polish slaughter. 
1454 King Casimir IV granted the Niesor Statutes, clarifying the legal basis of the Voivodeship Semix. The king could promulgate new laws, raise taxes, or call for a lever copyright en masse only with the consent of the Semix, and the nobility were protected from judicial abuses. The Niesor Statutes also curbed the power of the magnates, as the Sheen received the right to elect many officials, including judges, voivods, and castellans. These privileges were demanded by the slaughter as a compensation for their participation in the Thirteen Years' War. The first free election of a king took place in 1492. Only senators voted in the 1492 free election, which was won by John I. Albert. For the duration of the Jagiellonian dynasty, only members of that royal family were considered for election. Later, there would be no restrictions on the choice of candidates. In 1493 the National Parliament, the Sheem, began meeting every two years at Iotka Cube W. It comprised two chambers, a senate of 81 bishops and other dignitaries, and, a chamber of envoys of 54 envoys representing their respective lands. The numbers of senators and envoys later increased. On April 26, 1496 King John I Albert granted the privilege of Iotka Cube W increasing the nobility's feudal power over serfs. It bound the peasant to the land, as only one son was permitted to leave the village. Townsfolk were prohibited from owning land, and positions in the church hierarchy could be given only to nobles. On October 23, 1501, at Milnik Polish a Euro-Lithuanian Union was reformed at the Union of Milnik. It was there that the tradition of the coronation team was founded. Once again the middle nobility attempted to reduce the power of the magnates with a law that made them impeachable before the Senate for malfeasance. However the Act of Molno of October 25 did more to strengthen the magnate-dominated Senate of Poland than the lesser nobility. The nobles were given the right to disobey the king or his representative as a euro in the Latin, non pre standa obodientia euro, and to form confederations, an armed rebellion against the king or state officers if the nobles thought that the law or their legitimate privileges were being infringed. On May 3, 1505 King Alexander Wunschgelen granted the Act of Nile Novi Nisi Commune Consensu. This forbade the king to pass any new law without the consent of the representatives of the nobility, in Sheem and Senate assembled, and thus greatly strengthened the nobility's political position. Basically, this act transferred legislative power from the king to the Sheem. This date commonly marks the beginning of the first Res Ex Pospolita, the period of a slaughter run Commonwealth. In 1520, the Act of Bidgast granted the Sheem the right to convene every four years, with or without the king's permission. About that time, the executionist movement began to take form. Its members would seek to curb the power of the magnates at the Sheem and to strengthen the power of king and country. In 1562 at the Sheem in Iotka Cube W they would force the magnates to return many leased crown lands to the king, and the king to create a standing army. One of the most famous members of this movement was Jan Zamoyski. After his death in 1605, the movement lost its political force. Until the death of Sigismund II Augustus, the last king of the Jagiellonian dynasty, monarchs could be elected from within only the royal family. However, Starting from 1573, practically any Polish noble or foreigner of royal blood could become a Polish Euro-Lithuanian monarch. Every newly elected king was supposed to sign two documents a Euro the Pacta Convent a Euro a confirmation of the king's pre-election promises, and Henrik and articles. The latter document served as a virtual Polish constitution and contained the basic laws of the Commonwealth, free election of kings, religious tolerance, the Diet to be gathered every two years. Foreign policy controlled by the Diet. A royal advisory council chosen by the Diet. Official posts restricted to Polish and Lithuanian nobles. Taxes and monopolies set up by the Diet only. Nobles right to disobey the king should he break any of these laws. In 1578 King Stefan Batry created the Crown Tribunal in order to reduce the enormous pressure on the royal court. This placed much of the monarch's juridical power in the hands of the elected slaughter deputies, further strengthening the nobility class. In 1581 the Crown Tribunal was joined by a counterpart in Lithuania, 
the Lithuanian tribunal. Equals transformation into aristocracy equals. For many centuries, wealthy and powerful members of the slata sought to gain legal privileges over their peers. Few slata were wealthy enough to be known as magnates. A proper magnet should be able to trace noble ancestors back for many generations and own at least twenty villages or estates. He should also hold a major office in the Commonwealth. Some historians estimate the number of magnates as 1% of the number of slata. Out of approximately 1 million slata, tens of thousands of families, only 200 a euro 300 persons could be classed as great magnates with countrywide possessions and influence, and 30 a euro 40 of them could be viewed as those with significant impact on Poland's politics. Magnates often received gifts from monarchs, which significantly increased their wealth. Often, those gifts were only temporary leases, which the magnates never returned. One of the most important victories of the magnates was the late 16th century right to create ordinarches, which ensured that a family which gained wealth and power could more easily preserve this. Ordinates of families of Radza Angstrom, Zamoyski, Potoki or Lubomirski often rivaled the estates of the king and were important power bases for the magnates. Equals loss of influence by Slater equals. The sovereignty of Slater was ended in 1795 by partitions of Poland, and until 1918 their legal status was dependent on policies of the Russian Empire, the Kingdom of Prussia or the Habsburg monarchy. In the 1840s Nicholas I reduced 64,000 Slater to commoner status. Despite this, 62.8% of Russia's nobles were Slater in 1858 and still 46.1% in 1897. Serfdom was abolished in Russian Poland on February 19, 1864. It was deliberately enacted in a way that would ruin the Slata. It was the only area where peasants paid the market price in redemption for the land. All land taken from Polish peasants since 1846 was to be returned without redemption payments. The ex serfs could only sell land to other peasants, not Slata. 90% of the ex serfs in the empire who actually gained land after 1861 were in the eight western provinces. Along with Romania, Polish landless or domestic serfs were the only ones to be given land after serfdom was abolished. All this was to punish the Slata's role in the uprisings of 1830 and 1863. By 1864, 80% of Slata were da copyright class a copyright, one quarter petty nobles were worse off than the average serf. 48.9% of land in Russian Poland was in peasant hands, nobles still held 46%. In Second Polish Republic the privileges of the nobility were lawfully abolished by the March Constitution in 1921 and as such not granted by any future Polish law. Culture of Polish Slata The Polish nobility differed in many respects from the nobility of other countries. The most important difference was that, while in most European countries the nobility lost power as the ruler strove for absolute monarchy, in Poland the reverse process occurred, the nobility actually gained power at the expense of the king, and the political system evolved into an oligarchy. Poland's nobility were also more numerous than those of all other European countries, constituting some 10 a euro 12% of the total population of historic Polish a euro Lithuanian Commonwealth also some 10 a euro 12% among ethnic Poles on ethnic Polish lands, but up to 25% of all Poles worldwide, while in some poorer regions nearly 30%. However, according to Slata comprised around 8% of the total population in 1791, and no more than 16% of the Roman Catholic population. It should be noted, though, that Polish Slata usually incorporated most local nobility from the areas that were absorbed by Polander Euro Lithuania. By contrast, the nobilities of other European countries, except for Spain, amounted to a mere 1 Euro 3%. However, the era of sovereign rules of Polish nobility ended earlier than in other countries yet in 1795. Since then, their legitimation and future fate depended on legislature and procedures of Russian Empire. Kingdom of Prussia or Habsburg monarchy. Gradually their privileges were under further limitations to be completely dissolved by March Constitution of Poland in 1921. There were a number of avenues to upward social mobility and the achievement of nobility. Poland's nobility was not a rigidly exclusive, 
closed class. Many low-born individuals, including townsfolk, peasants and Jews, could and did rise to official ennoblement in Polish society. Each Slichik had enormous influence over the country's politics, in some ways even greater than that enjoyed by the citizens of modern democratic countries. Between 1652 and 1791, any nobleman could nullify all the proceedings of a given sheem or sejmik by exercising his individual right of liberum veto, except in the case of a confederated sheem or confederated sejmik. All children of the Polish nobility inherited their noble status from a noble mother and father. Any individual could attain a nobleman for special services to the state. A foreign noble might be naturalized as a Polish noble by the Polish king. In theory at least, all Polish noblemen were social equals. Also in theory, they were legal peers. Those who held real power dignities were more privileged but these dignities were not hereditary. Those who held honorary dignities were higher in ritual hierarchy but these dignities were also granted for a lifetime. Some tenancies became hereditary and went with both privilege and titles. Nobles who were not direct barons of the crown but held land from other lords were only peers de year. The poorest enjoyed the same rights as the wealthiest magnate. The exceptions were a few symbolically privileged families such as the Radza Angstrom, Lubomirski and Zartoryski, who sported honorary aristocratic titles recognized in Poland or received from foreign courts, such as prince, or count all other slata simply addressed each other by their given name or as sub-brother, or the feminine equivalent. The other forms of address would be illustrious and magnificent lord, magnificent lord, generous lord, or noble lord, or simply his her grace lord lady. According to their financial standing, the nobility were in common speech divided into, magnates the wealthiest class. Owners of vast lands, towns, many villages, Thousands of peasants, middle nobility, owners of one or more villages, often having some official titles or envoys from the local land assemblies to the general assembly, petty nobility, owners of a part of a village or owning no land at all, often referred to by a variety of colorful Polish terms such as, Sarichsku or Euro Grey nobility, from their grey, woolen, uncolored angstrom one quarter opens, or kolika a Euro local nobility, similar to Zoe Zagrodowa a euro from Zagroda, a farm, often little different from a peasant's dwelling, Zagonu a euro. From Zagon, a small unit of land measure, hide nobility, Xawstkowa a euro partial, owners of only part of a single village, Panek a euro little pan, term used in Kashubai, the Kashubian region, also one of the legal terms for legally separated lower nobility in late medieval and early modern Poland. Rukskosij a euro buckwheat sowers a euro those who had to work their fields themselves. Zlomiankow a euro from Zlariank, a name for plural nobility settlement, neighborhood nobility. Just like Rukskosij, Zlomiankow a nobility would have no peasants, Brokow a euro cobble nobility, for those living in towns like townsfolk, Goyot a euro naked nobility, that is, the landless. Goyota slaughter would be considered the lowest of the high, par cube langstrom panek. Also pod panek pid panek and podolia and Ukrainian accent a euro a petty slichik pretending to be wealthy. Note that the Polish landed gentry was composed of any nobility that owned lands, thus of course the magnates, the middle nobility and that lesser nobility that had at least part of the village. As manorial lordships were also open to burgesses of certain privileged royal cities, not all landed gentry had a hereditary title of nobility. Equals heraldry equals. Coats of arms were very important to the Polish nobility. Its heraldic system evolved together with its neighbors in Central Europe, while differing in many ways from the heraldry of other European countries. Polish knighthood families had its counterparts links or roots in Moravia and Germany. The most notable difference is that, contrary to other European heraldic systems, the Jews, Muslim Tatars or in other minorities would be given the noble title. Also, most families sharing origin would also share a coat of arms. They would also share arms with families adopted into the clan. 
sometimes unrelated families would be falsely attributed to the clan on the basis of similarity of arms. Also often noble families claimed an accurate clan membership. Logically, the number of coats of arms in the system was rather low and did not exceed 200 in late Middle Ages. Also, the tradition of differentiating between the coat of arms proper and a lozenge grant to women did not develop in Poland. Usually men inherited the coat of arms from their fathers. Also, the brysia was rarely used. Equals Sarmatism equals the Slata Euro 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 s prevalent mentality and ideology were manifested in Sarmatism, a name derived from a myth of the Slata Euro 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 s origin in the powerful ancient nation of Sarmatians. This belief system became an important part of Slata culture and affected all aspects of their lives. It was popularized by poets who exalted traditional village life, peace, and pacifism. It was also manifested in Oriental style apparel and made the scimitar like Sobla II, a near-obligatory item of everyday slaughter apparel. Sarmatism served to integrate the multi-ethnic nobility as it created an almost nationalistic sense of unity and pride in the slaughter's golden liberty. Knowledge of Latin was widespread, and most slaughter freely mixed Polish and Latin vocabulary in everyday conversation. Equals religious beliefs equals, prior to the Reformation, the Polish nobility were mostly either Roman Catholic or Orthodox with a small group of Muslims. Many families, however, soon adopted the Reformed faiths. After the Counter-Reformation, when the Roman Catholic Church regained power in Poland, the nobility became almost exclusively Catholic, despite the fact that Roman Catholicism was not the majority religion in Commonwealth. In the 18th century, Many followers of Jacob Frank joined the ranks of Jewish-descended Polish gentry. Although Jewish religion wasn't usually a pretext to block or deprive of noble status, some laws favored religious conversion from Judaism to Christianity by rewarding it with ennoblement. Gallery References Alexander Bra 1 quarter CKNER, Samanik Etymologici Jar Unregistered Trademark Zika Polskiego, 1st edition Cracker Cube W, Krakowska Spa Cube Langstrom Car with 1927. English, Gar Cube Drecki, Piat. Economy, Society, and Lordship in Medieval Poland, 1100 1250. New York, New York, Holmes and Meyer Publishers, Inc. ISBN 0 8419 1318 8. OCLC 25787903. Mantufel, Tadeus, The Formation of the Polish State, The Period of Ducal Rule, 963 Euro 1194, Detroit, Michigan, USA Wayne State University Press, ISBN 978 0 8143 5. External links, Descendants of the Great Scheme, Confederation of the Polish Nobility, Polish Nobility Association Foundation, Association of the Belarusian Nobility, Association of Lithuanian Nobility, The Polish Aristocracy by Rafał Heidel Manku A Euro History of Polish Titled Families, Heraldry, Orders, The Inexorable Political Rise of the Slata, Short Article on the Polish Nobility, Digital Library of Ilk Pulska. See also, List of Polish Titled Nobility, List of Slata, Lithuanian nobility, Polish heraldry, Polish landed gentry, Polish name.